Ordinary minds of young people. Today we have Brian Oruko, the CEO of Direct Errands and Logistics Kenya. Brian, thank you. Thank you. Karibu sana. Thank you, young person. Karibu, karibu thank you. Sana. I love, yeah. I love how you. No one has ever worn black like Kenyana <laughs> Vizuri in this show. So I love your fashion uh -huh. okay. and uh, I love your style. Okay, so, thank you. Sana. Thank you. Tell us uh, what. Uh, what is the background of Direct Errands and Logistics Kenya? Uh, my name is Brian mm -hmm. Oruko, mm -hmm. uh, popularly known as uh, Killer B. Uh -huh. A lot of people call me Killer B. Uh, Killer B is a name that I got from uh, my college days. Killer B as Killer B. Killer B. Uh, oh, Killer B. B. The B is just the B. The oh, okay, okay. A, B, okay. B for boy. Uh, Killer was given to me because by a friend of mine who deemed me as a very lucky person. Uh -huh. So instead of saying lucky, he said Killer. So he's a lucky boy. So Killer B. Uh -huh. So that is the, the reason. That is the reason behind my name. And um, yes, like you've said, I'm the CEO of <laughs> Direct Errors and Logistics. It it, 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 it it perplexes me sometimes when somebody asks me whether I'm a CEO of Dell's Kenya, like we popularly call it nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, because it was something that, you know, started from just a dream. You know, it, it just came in, it just a purpose, a calling. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something that was planned, like, okay, you have this capital, uh, go and use it to start your business and all these other things that majority of people get. You know, so the background of uh, direct errands uh, and logistics uh, services. Number one, my background, I have completely no education in logistics. I have completely no education in supply chain management. I have completely no education. Apart from the researches I've been doing now, uh, being that I, I've developed a lot of interest mm -hmm. uh, in this field. But I have a background in clinical psychology. Uh, I studied for that one at Amani uh, a Training Center and Counseling Institute. Uh, that is where I got my, my diploma from. Uh, I was I enrolled to Amani after uh, family. My relatives actually were the ones who were like, okay, let us enroll this boy because there is something about him. You know, I was going through grief. Oh. Uh, my background is, I'm a grief warrior. Uh, I, I can't live without saying that. I'm a grief warrior. At the same time, uh, interestingly enough, is that uh, I am an only uh, surviving family member in our family. Uh, I lost my mother in the year 2001. Uh, then I lost my father a month later. When I lost him, then we were adopted. Oh. So when we were adopted, uh, we had to go and stay with my uh, his elder brother in Nairobi. Uh, with my brother. We were only two boys. So then a year later, again, uh, I lost my brother. Uh, and that is the point when now I started building uh, skills all over my, 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 my skin to mean all, all over my life, around myself. Because now I was like, when will my time of dying come? come. And I waited for that time up until now when we are doing this interview. And <laughs> I would love to ask you, yes. how were you able to understand that these things do happen and you have to... My to mother... My mother taught me what death means. That is the best lesson my mother ever gave me. Uh, because I believed, I, she believed that uh, a time will come when she'll no longer be there. And at the same time, uh, I was mama's boy. 
So majority of my time I would just spend next to her. Anything, you know, we were more like, we were so much in tune that, that uh, I wouldn't do without her and she wouldn't do without me, you know. So one time she bought me a pet, a dog. I grew up in Makasembo Estate. Oh. I'm born and bred in Kisumu. I went to school at Mmsha. Then I went to high school at Nyabondo Boys uh, in Nyakach. So one time, I, I think it was about uh, I standard three, standard four, that she bought me a pet, a dog. So this evening she comes with this dog and she says, now this is going to be your dog from today. Uh, give, give, uh, give the dog a name. Then once you give that dog a particular name, uh, now treat that dog as your best friend. So that night during dinner, she ensured that the little that was left, she served it and I took to my, my pet. For a week, this had been happening. Then one, one Friday, I remember, because the next day was a Saturday and she was doing laundry. So when I, when I woke up, then uh, she was like, okay, uh, go and take something from the kitchen, take it to your dog. So when I went there, I found the dog wasn't waking up. So, so then, then uh, I asked her, Mom, the dog is not waking up. What could be the problem? <laughs> then she says, ah, really? Can I go and check? Okay, go and try waking the dog up. Later on in life, uh, I, I came to understand that it's my mom who actually killed the dog. She really played with your psychology. Exactly. Yeah? Why? Because she wanted me to understand that loss and grief mm. uh, do happen. And when it happens, sometimes in children, uh, as adults, we assume and presume that, ah, uh, this child will not know what is going on. But children also mourn. Mm. Children also grieve. And and the grief that my mom taught me is what made me to survive this loss yeah. through that incident of killing the pet. Because my brother was not taught what grief is. And late up to when my dad was, my dad's remains were being taken now um, uh, up country for burial, my brother could not understand how is it possible that in a span of a month, you are being told that now you don't have a mother and you don't have a father. You know, he was younger then. He was uh, just about uh, five years old, you know. But he could ask questions that even me, myself, I couldn't ask. Because, you know, me, I was mama's boy and, and, and I was more of an introvert as compared to him. He was more of an extrovert. Mm -hmm. so, so basically, that is just uh, my background. Oh, yeah. And uh, now you studied clinical psychology. Yes. How did the Dells Kenya come about? Ah, my days uh, in clinical psych in the classes of clinical psychology uh, gave birth to a very brilliant and a wild, quote unquote, uh, gentleman. Because that is when everybody realized that this particular gentleman is talented, and there is something special about him because. I, ha I had the ability, you know, uh, I was coming out of a very horrible 15 years of my life that I had attempted suicide four, five, uh, three, four times, you know. Uh, and, and, and none of these suicidal attempts were going through. So my days in this class are the ones that now made me realize that there is reason for me to live. So at that point, Dells was nowhere. You know, I, I hadn't even thought of doing business. I did not know that, you know, I, I would even one day be a businessman. I was just doing this so that I could help myself from grief. And at the same time, I could sit back in an office and get employed. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, they used to say that uh, when, you, when you're done with these particular uh, classes, then you can easily get an NGO job. Then once this was done, now where was the job? Mm -hmm. The big question. I'm done with it. I've gone through the, the, the process. Now where is the job? Unemployment. Now there's no job. Mm. So the only best thing that you could do at that time 
was now just to seek for training sessions and opportunities. Okay? Then now I start thinking to myself, now that is about eight years later. Eight years since from you from, from the clinical psychology. That's just idling, you know, just, just trying to figure out what am I going to do, you know? Mm -hmm. No employment, but because of these other, uh, uh, the, 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 the big, I call them my bigger brothers, uh, they would try to see how best they could help me and engage me. Then COVID strikes. Wow. So everybody's at home. People are not moving. Lockdown. Um, those who are working probably are being told, we don't need your services anymore. Yeah. So who are you going to ask a job from? At that point, you know, I got my first born when I was 26 years old because I wanted, that is part of my healing. My kids are part of my healing uh, because I had, I had to get somebody I could identify with as blood. So the earlier I got them, the better for me. The later I would have postponed it, then the worse it could have become for me. So now COVID hits and everybody is in the house, so guys just watch TV. The, my firstborn is barely is barely uh, turning four mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. My secondborn, uh, Dylan, is just turning, uh, I think, a month old or two. When when uh, their mom was pregnant with uh, my firstborn, who's called Osborne Miguel, mm -hmm. I sold sausages. But when she was eight months pregnant, I had to serve her <laughs> all those sausages <laughs> because now we were not making sales. Mm -hmm. And she was hungry. So one time I came from selling the smokies because I was raised at Makasembo. That is why I was doing this business. Then she says, Leo pia hakuna kichu ya kukula? I told her, yeah, hakuna kichu ya kukula. Lakini, nimechoka. Mm -hmm. So I turned on the, 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 the stove <laughs> then I told her, eat, eat. So she ate. Then COVID hits, we are in the house, the kids are there. Uh, one is turning four years, one is turning one year. Then my, my firstborn keeps on sending me to the, when I'm going to the kitchen, Lilete Maji. Nilete sijito yangu kwa corridor. Mm. Nilete tissue. Nipeleki kwa cho. You know. <laughs> then I come to realize that, ah, oh, this kid keeps on sending me. Uh, so I tell him, I confront him and tell him, don't send me again. Uh -huh. Now I'm your father. So if you want anything from the kitchen, go for it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Not unless it is something hot. But if it is something you're just going to pick from your bedroom or wherever, just go and take it, but don't keep on sending. At this particular point, the county government has given us the notice already. We have already been served with a notice. We are supposed to be moving out of these houses in the next one month. Or two. Where am I going to without a job? Eh? Where am I going to without a job? Okay, they are promising compensation, mm -hmm. sorry, but at the same time, you can only eat it for as long as it lasts. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then an idea comes to my mind, what if guys, I went out there and then people started sending me mm -hmm. and then they pay me. Wow. Okay? Then I'm like, okay, let me think about it. How does it work? So I go into Google and I check being sent and paid. Then it, the search engine brings out errand service, courier service delivery, yeah. courier. Then I'm like, ah. So I check errand services, errand business. So I click errand business. Then we go to errand business, then I see how to start an errand business, how to, how to survive in, what are the pros and cons of errand. Ah, 
then my interest develops more and more. Eh? My interest develops more and more. Then I'm like, okay, if this is how it is, then I think I need to ask somebody. Mm. What do they think? Luckily for me, and that is what I always say every day, the, the idea you have in your mind as a youth, be very careful who you ask for feedback. Because if you ask a wrong person, they will tell you no, and that will be the end of it, and they will tell you it can't work, and you will never try. So I went ahead and I asked, and uh, <laughs> I shared it with the mother of my children. Then <clears throat> she said, just try. So I said, okay, I'm going to try. So I started, I looked for an app, the one that I could use to create posters for Facebook. Mm. It's called Canva app. It's on App Store. The same iPhone that I was using was a gift from my uncle because I told him I'd like to have an iPhone. So he sends me an iPhone 6. Okay? Then I asked my friend, close buddy at the time, that I want to start an errand business. That is after asking, uh, uh, sharing with uh, the mother of my kids. Then I asked my friend, uh, I would like to start an errand business in Kisumu. Then he tells me, Aha, Kisumu ni dogo. It can't work. Mm. First thing he told me, it can't work. It can't work, Brian. The naysayers. Then I said, but it can work. They said, where are you going to get the clients from? Tell me. Mm. Tell me where are you going to raise your first five clients from? Then I told him, I don't know. But I'm going to try. Don't bother trying. It can't work. I'm telling you the truth. It can't work. So I told him, okay, it can't work. But then kindly assist me with uh, an app, if you know any, that I can use to create just a a flyer for social media. Then he sends me the name. Then I download. So basically, I started my business with an iPhone and, and an data GB, <laughs> data bundle, uh -huh. one giga data mm -hmm. bundle. Then he sends me that, and after everybody has had dinner, then I sit in the sitting room alone. I sat there for close to six hours, creating the first flyer and looking for the first for the business name, mm -hmm. and that is how we were. I named my my uh, direct. It wasn't direct before. Mm -hmm. It was Kisumu Fast Errands. Fast F A S T. F A S T. Oh, okay. And back then it was reliable and honest. <laughs> That was the tagline. Uh -huh. Kisumu fast errands, reliable yeah, and honest. Okay. Then by 5 30, mm -hmm. I go to the bedroom. Now I retire to sleep. I have already posted it on social media. Mm -hmm. So, guys, that. Uh, so I start sharing Kisumu Mom's page, KBC page, mm -hmm. Y254 page. Youth in Action page. I start sharing all over. I just start making noise on social media. Mm -hmm. Relevant noise. So we started with the main service was grocery shopping, uh, laundry pickup and drop off. Those were the biggest service we could think of. I could think of back then. Then <laughs> we proceed, we proceed and proceed and proceed up until the point when we get our first ring. Then I pick, it was about on a Thursday afternoon, we still had Corona Market next to Makasembo. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm running the entire Kisumu Fast Errands, I'm running it from, my, from the bedroom, the back room of this house. Mm -hmm. So basically, Direct Errands and Logistics Services Kenya started from a county council house. Wow. And uh, what kind of activities do you engage in as Direct Errands Services? Now... <laughs> Before the activities, 
You should have asked me how the name changed from Kisumu First Terrans to Dells Kenya. How did it change? For a year, we were marketing. Mm -hmm. We had our first job, and that's how we made our first 300 shillings. Then we realized that, oh, this thing can work. Let us proceed head on. So here we are. We keep on marketing, keep on marketing, keep on marketing. Then everybody starts call, calling me, ah, first errands. Ah, first errands. Mm -hmm. So everywhere I go, if I go to watch football, first errands. <laughs> How are you? First errands. How are you? First errands. Mm -hmm. VP. Boah. Then somebody on the background tells me, Brian, it is now time you checked on, on um, registering this name. Because mm -hmm. now the political season is coming and politicians want people like you who are vocal and can speak and, you know. Mm -hmm. Plus then again, you can use fast errands to offer them services. Now it won't be bad. So I rushed to Huduma Center, e-citizen, Kisumu fast errands, register, paid 1,000. That's how I met this great gentleman by the name of Osodo. Mm -hmm. Osodo uh, works, he played rugby and he works at uh, Huduma Center, Kisumu. Because now I gave him the work, do for me that work. Then later in the afternoon, he calls me and tells me, Brad, I have bad news. The name that you have been using, <laughs> that name is registered. Hmm. Right? So what are you talking about? Right? You see, did you type Kisumu first? <laughs> no, that is the information back from the registrar. Hmm. That name is gone. Look for another one. Then I tell him, no, please. I'm coming. This is my baby. This is my life. What do you mean somebody has registered the name? How? Where? When? <laughs> eh? How? Then I get there and Osoto tells me, look, read that letter. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there, I'm reading the letter. Mm -hmm. Then I tell him, unbelievable. What is happening? Brian, there are people out here who just sit and see, uh, that is a sort of speaking, and see uh, startups coming up, and then they go register the name because they know if you're aggressive enough, you'll push it for even 50 years, but one day you'll need that name. Mm. So I tell him, ah, really? Then what you need to do, kindly, try and figure out, is there any number attached to the name? So he tells me, give me an hour. So the works on it. He's a genius. It's an IT guy. Works on it and calls me now and tells me that's the number. Mm -hmm. So I call. Mm -hmm. Hello. Na vipindugu. I jina ya kisumu fast terans. Kumbe ni mekwa ni market na na niyako na. Niyo. Sasa kamu nataka hiyo jina if you still want that name. Kindly. Give me a particular amount of money. I ask him, how much? I want 70,000. <laughs> but I want, oh, you have a lot. You have a lot to package. Thank you so much, Brian. Your story cannot end in just one episode. We have to have you on the next one. Guys, I am sure you also want to hear Brian tell us more about his story. See you next time. Same time, same place. I am Nyangweso Grenis. This is the way to do it. This is the